there's a brand new phone maker you've never heard of. And their motto, interestingly enough, is never settle. The company was founded by a former Oppo executive who believes that it is possible to make the perfect device at a reasonable cost. And he set out to prove it with the One. Now, the One Plus One is a confusing name because, well, it's not only the same as HTC's flagship model, the HTC One M8, it's also a math equation. And spoiler, the answer is two. Which also makes the point of the One name all the more confusing. To One Plus, what does it mean to not settle? It means getting everything you could ever want and need in a phone without having to compromise features or specs for any reason. No biggie. I mean, we're never happy with the mobile device that we buy. There's always something wrong with it. The OnePlus One is made to look like a premium smartphone with top of the line specs and fully customizable firmware. So I was intrigued from the very start. Now that I've had a chance to play with the phone for a week, how do I feel about it? The short answer is that I'm even more impressed with it now. But why? The One starts at $300 for a 16 gig version and goes up to $350 for a 64 gig version. Compare this with Google's Nexus 5, which starts at 350 for 16 gigs and goes up to 400 for 32 gigs. The display is very impressive. It's 1080p and has accurate colors, bright whites, and fantastic viewing angles. There's very little to hate here. Additionally, the processor and RAM help the One run incredibly smooth. The camera is also a much better option than the Nexus 5 and Cyanogen mod lets me do pretty much whatever the heck I want with the Android experience. Being able to customize Android may be overboard for most folks, but the good news is that you don't have to mess with it if you don't want to. And thanks to its polycarbonate build, it also simply feels like a solid premium device. It actually reminds me of a unibody frame like what you would see on an HTC or Nokia device. Lastly, the battery got me through a full day of use nearly every day that I used the phone. Sure, I got it a little too close at times, but it's more than reasonable for a $300 phone. Now, when it comes to the Cyanogen experience, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but in a nutshell, it's an Android ROM that by default looks much like stock Android. With that said, you can change around a whole bunch of settings and give it your own unique look and feel. You can switch UI themes, you can move buttons around, you can change the icons and symbols, you can add quick settings, and hey, there's a whole lot more. It's a fair bet to say that if you have any annoyances with the UI of your current Android phone, regardless of who makes it, Cyanogen more than likely has a way to fix it to fit your taste. Most important, the One is the first smartphone with Cyanogen built in, which means you can enjoy a whole bunch of optimizations that you probably won't find with Cyanogen on any other device. And plus you don't have to worry about this whole process of installing it onto your phone, so that's always a good thing as well. OnePlus is trying to sell this as the perfect phone, of course, but there are still some features I wish it could have. And here's the deal. The company's making little to no profit on this device because it's investing in building a track record and reputation as quickly as it can. And that's a difficult thing to do given the intense amount of competition there is in the market right now. And so because of all this, I almost feel guilty even bringing up shortcomings, but for the sake of being nitpicky, because that's what we do in reviews, here goes. First, the size may put off quite a few people. It's 5.5 inches, so it's slightly smaller than the Galaxy Note 3. But that means that if you're bothered by larger smartphones like the Galaxy Note 3, or they just don't fit very well in your hands, then you're probably going to need to look for other phones that are a little bit smaller. Hey, the Nexus 5 is still out there. It's still a good option. Also, I'd also like louder earpieces and external speakers. And there's always micro SD expansion. I, I wish you could have it. But I also recognize that it's not the end of the world since OnePlus has made it so cheap to get extra internal storage space. Now, also high on my wish list are wireless charging and waterproofing, both elements that I believe are growing more and more important over time. And the way I look at it is, given the One's focus on customization, it'd be great if the company could find a way to let you add features in as part of a custom online order. You know, think Moto Maker. Even if it costs a little bit more to do this, it would be a great opportunity. So aside from a few minor quibbles, this is a mobile device that's worth buying. The OnePlus One is an impeccable smartphone, and it's a steal of a deal for $300. It looks and behaves just like most other flagship phones out there, and if I didn't already know how much it cost, I would have guessed a much higher price. We're looking at a camera-centric device here. It's got a 13 megapixel camera that's both optically stabilized and comes with a bright f1.8 aperture. The